Yeah, I'm here tonight in uh, Branchville, Indiana at the Branchville Correctional Institute. I'm here with a friend of mine, Harvey Jett from Black Oak, Arkansas. Yeah, the band, that is. The band and not the town. Right. Okay, because there is a Black Oak, Arkansas. That's right. Yes, it exactly is. We're, we're here. We're getting ready to have a, a Harvey Jett concert with a special guest, 53.5. But uh, we're going to be doing some rock and rolling for about 200 or so inmates here just in a little bit. And, Harvey, can you just tell us a little bit about uh, uh, how would you get connected with Black Oak? Because Black Oak was, I mean, they were a mega band back in the 70s, in the early 70s. I mean, with Jim Dandy as the, the probably the number one hit song. How did you get connected with them? Well, we all kind of grew up in the same area, in the northeast Arkansas area. And and uh, we knew each other before Black Oak. And, uh, you know, uh, I got a chance to audition for the guys when I was like 17. And, uh, you know, they, they liked what they heard. I liked what I heard. And so we went on down the road for about a million miles. You know? So that's the history of it. And then what, what, and then what happened during that time you was with them as far as rising the fame? I mean, they got really big. Yeah, we had a uh, had a good time with uh, uh, the, the uh, couple of guys in the Iron Butterfly, uh, Mike Panera and Lee Dorman. They uh, they were doing a farewell tour with Iron Butterfly in '71, and uh, they also produced our first album there with Atlantic Records. And uh, so they uh, we were their opening act uh, during a 50 city tour there, uh, and uh, we had a great time. And uh, they were kind of on their way out. And these guys, they were their style of music was, you know, it wasn't southern rock. And some people were, you know, people were looking for something different. And uh, they were a great bunch of guys, but they were kind of doing their farewell thing. They just kind of, you know, uh, was tired of it and was going to do something else. And we were kind of young and crazy, and uh, we just come on there and just had a good time. And I think the crowd saw the energy that we had, the excitement, you know, being new and fresh, something a little bit different. It was a country sound with a little bit of a southern rock to it, blues rock or whatever, and, uh, you know, it just turned into Black Oak, Arkansas, and uh, we just, from that 50 city tour, we, you know, the next tour, we were, you know, we had, we had people like Kiss and uh, Bruce Springsteen opening for us and Skinner and on and on and on, and uh, so, uh, you know, and, and uh, Got to, got to meet a lot of these guys I and mean, become friends with a lot of them and, uh, you know, some great musicians out there. But, uh, you know, after about six or seven years, you know, uh, I pretty well, you know, started hearing a different drum, you know. And I started hearing things that I'm not talking about musically, I'm talking about spiritually. And it pulled me away from the guys, you know. And so that's where I'm at now. So that's where, when God was speaking to you, I mean, you had been going through probably the same thing that all rock and roll groups did. I mean, a lot of probably just the situation of uh, uh, probably what we'd call sex, drugs, rock and roll, just uh, a lot of the problems that affected country and rock groups. But that just kind of affected your life to the point to where it gave you a, a listening ear to hear the things of God calling you to? Well, yeah, it got to the place, I guess you might say, where once you have everything the world has to offer, you know, money, fame, and fortune, uh, you know, if that doesn't satisfy you, which it won't, uh, you know, a lot of the people out there, the musicians, entertainers that are successful, uh, if they don't have the Lord in their life, if they don't have God in their life, you know, they can smile when the camera's on, but I know for a fact that behind the scenes, these people are just like me and you, you know, and they're, they need, they need that fulfillment from God. That's the only place you can get that fulfillment of peace is from God. And because he created, us, he created us for his fellowship, and, you know, there's nothing else will fill that gap except God. Yeah, and I saw a video, Harvey, of the Black Oak playing in front of massive crowds, probably 350, some even reports say 400,000 people were at that concert. So that's a, that's a contrast of difference in what you're living today compared to being on the stage back then. But, uh, you know, so what you gave up when you left Black Oak, what, in, was it 1974, I believe? 74, that's right. Yeah, we finished a 30-day uh, tour in Europe. And that was my last 30 days, and uh, we were the opening act for uh, Ozzy Osbourne, and that's when he was still with Black Sabbath. And uh, that was my last 30 days, and uh, June the 1st, 1974, and I drove out the gates. And didn't know for sure what I was going to do for a living, you know, music was all I knew. But I knew that God was telling me to go and tell his story, tell my story, what he had done for me. And that's what we're doing tonight at the prisons. So I've, I've been to prisons in eight states, you know, playing and singing. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, uh, 
I mean, it's just a great thing to be able to go into a prison. These guys, a lot of them are just really, they've lost everything. They're hopeless. They have That's nowhere right. to turn to. They are empty. They're just desperate. And, uh, you know, you, you got to think about what Jesus said. He said, I was in prison and you came to visit me. Well, it's kind of like we're going to visit Jesus here tonight. That's right. You know, we're not doing it for credit. We're doing it because these guys really need something you know they need the lord and they you know we're going to give them a little entertainment we're going to have some fun and then we're going to talk about the things of god that's right that sounds great harvey i'm looking forward to hearing you play tonight and just seeing the response of the men uh, we should have a couple hundred men in here from what they tell us that's great uh, and the crowd could have even been more but they uh you know did something here where we're only going to have uh, a little over a couple hundred but it's going to be a great concert and we're going to rock branchville correctional institute tonight january the 30th on a sunday evening well, the ones that didn't make it tonight, they're going to hear about it, and they'll come next time. That's right. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have fun. That's right. We are. All right, Harvey. Well, thanks very much for taking a couple minutes here before the concert, and so let's get ready for that concert. Thank you, Barry. God bless. Uh -huh.